to live this way, you're gonna be in shape. It's like a workout all day, all, all the time. It's definitely physically demanding. You know, when you homestead and live like this, it's a super intentional lifestyle uh, to be off the grid because at any moment, things can change. Like for instance, we get our electricity from the sun. Well, if the sun's behind the fog, there's no electricity today. So there are no lines running from anywhere out in the world to our house. Everything is within our bubble here. It's, uh, it's both a place, but it's also become something of a state of mind, I think, and a state of being. The magic that happens on the social level and the spiritual level is, is like nothing else I've ever felt before. Well, I'm Elizabeth West. I consider myself a farmer, educator, um, all sorts of actually occupations. Uh, my name is Lisa Redman. Um, I live here at Woodland Harvest uh, with my partner and our sons. Um, actually, our oldest son is living off on his own now, but we still have our younger son, Aiden, with us. I got here when I was six. Before I lived here, I lived like the, the normal life. Before I had like electricity, Wi-Fi and all that. And when it came here, um, there's, you know, limited electricity, no Wi-Fi. Yeah, I think a lot of friends of ours think we're either, we're trust fund babies or that we grow weed. And we don't. <laughs> we don't. We, uh, we don't. We, we... But uh, it's hard to actually describe a day as in it's the same every day. But animals get tended pretty much straight off the bat before, pretty much before we even tend ourselves. So we grow a lot of our own food. We grow a lot of our animals' own food. We attempt to compost as much of our waste as possible. So we're constantly trying to repurpose, recycle, and to restore the earth to her natural self. So we used to be actually tied to the grid, and in 2012, there was a really bad ice storm, and a tree fell on the electric lines, and we literally went off grid. But prior to that, it had been a goal of to, to get Woodland Harvest off the grid and produce our own power. So in 2012, when it literally like ripped us off the grid, we had a system in place. So we were like, okay, well, we're really going for it now. No you know? more backup. No backup plan. When we went off grid, um, it was it was just a constant learning process around not being dependent on electricity. Lisa and I met in the fall of 2010 and started really getting together in summer of 2011. So the year uh, following my partner's death um, and the boy's father, which was really intense time in my life, um, you know, I, w I was working at the university and I would go into the coffee shop every morning before I went to work to get grounded and Elizabeth and I started running into each other. When Elizabeth and I started hanging out as friends and we started coming here, I was like, whoa, you can live this way? <laughs> you know, and as a woman, like without a man around, like you can live this way? I was wowed by it and I fell in love with this land and this way of living. The only thing that brought me peace and healing and happiness after the death of my partner was going out into the woods and sitting on the dirt. And that was the only thing that brought me peace. Our falling in love, you know, it started with a friendship and a spark, but it's so much bigger than that. And, you know, our love is also the love that we share with the students and the young people and all the people who come through. We do host lots of internships and uh, volunteers and the college group's alternative spring break. And we do believe sort of in the each one teach one uh, philosophy, where if I know something and I teach you, then you go and you teach them, and then they go and they teach. 
And I mean, the house itself has been built that way. We use a lot of novice hands-on labor. But this just goes to show you, you don't have to be an expert to live off grid. It's definitely quite the experience to live off the grid, but it's, it's hard and I do miss being on the grid sometimes. And I don't have any friends that I really like hang out with a lot that are totally off the grid. So I'm the, the only one out of my friend group. Like we keep saying, it's a choice that we've made. Yeah. Because there are struggles attached with homesteading. We have been afraid we've, we're going to lose the farm or have to let the farm go a few times in the past few years. But Right, we, we've got the mortgage, we've got a few monthly bills, we've got our food. And our animals. Car insurance, we've got our animal costs. It's scary sometimes. But no, I mean, I choose this life every day, and it's, it's strange, and we have a lot of friends who don't understand why we would want to live so scarcely or live, you know, but it's really not that scarce. It's actually super abundant. By being off the grid, we become more resilient, right? Because, you know, if, if the power shuts off, our power doesn't shut off. If the water gets shut off, our water didn't, doesn't get shut off. Here, it's just cool that you can be with the land, the animals, the trees, the air, the water, and it's, it's been really awesome. Part of what we want young people to take away from here is that, that they have power, that for them to be empowered and to know that within them is the power to make some choices to make the world a better place. And they don't have to make choices that look just like ours. Why do you choose this life? Why do I choose this life? This is the only life for me. Yep.